Hello, hello, and welcome to Coffee Craft. I am your host, Anon Jr., and what I'm about to go through is one of those things that seemed like a good idea at the time. Uh, whether or not it still is <laughs> remains to be seen. Um, I, I wanted... Uh, I wanted some librarians around. And I wanted some people milling about the main room, because I've got... I've got some guys in the pro, po, the potion brewery, the potion brewery. And, you know, they're doing their work. They're making this look like an actual used workspace. Um, same thing over on this side. We got we got these guys over in the forge, and I added one more, a uh, stonemason, because uh, I've got so much stone, <laughs> and it's nice to have them. Uh, that's to try to keep them from clustering up by the door. Um, <clears throat> Or the dinner bell, whichever way you want to think of it. And, you know, and, and likewise, I, I got a couple of villagers finally moved over here. And th this is really what kind of kicked it off. I moved these guys over here, and I'm like, oh, I mean, I got the rail running up this way already. And it would be nice to have a few more villagers milling about. So I wanted to get some librarian types to, to run around the main lobby. And uh, I... I should have eight librarians and two shepherds. Should. Because um, I th this is one of those things that has turned out to be, I don't know if it's good or bad or what. Uh, like, for instance, you'll notice I, I added an extra block across the top of this door until I can find a better solution. Because uh, I found out the hard way that double carpet does not completely stop the pathfinding. Uh, like I, I was led to believe it would. And so I went to go out the front door and one of the shepherds followed me. I had to have a very sharp discussion with him about how his services will no longer be needed because I was not going to fight with them to get back through this door. Not with everybody else running around. I was probably going to end up with more villagers outside than I was inside. Uh, so <clears throat> he, he was, uh, he was let go. Of this mortal coil. Uh, <laughs> and the other two guys are around. I, I say I should have eight villagers. Because if you'll notice, there's a lot of things that are a little bit different. Some of it's decorative. Like, you know, I got these little, little like, lounge stations over here. Uh, I put the, the ruby gem on, on an armor stand. Just because I felt like something needed to be on that table. But I think I'm going to try to rework that. Uh... So that way, on top of the table is an end rod, and then that block is on top of the end rod. So it looks more like a, a table lamp in the sitting area. So, you know, that, that fills it without making it feel crowded. Because I wanted librarians, I needed places to put lecterns, and when you put a solid block, like a bookshelf, on top of the lectern, they don't seem to work at it. They'll find the workstation, but they won't work at it because of course villagers so i recessed the bookshelves and i kind of like the way that looks more anyway it, it helps give it a little more depth with the overhang and the books inset uh so i've got eight of these guys running about i i did that there and i got a couple of books on some of the lecterns just to to make this look like a a used work area i also added a little library across the back too so I've got my personal library up there that they're not allowed in. I, I want at least I want at least one space all to my own. Uh, so they've got this library back here. I, I'm kind of I'm kind of mixed on um, the way that turned out. Um, I, I'm not sure about the stripped oak. I like having the color difference, but I, I might end up uh, taking the stripped oak and putting strip dark oak just to just to give all the furniture uh that dark oak feel uh i definitely don't want to do planks i do want to do a strip log so that that might be something i change later on and, oh <laughs> and you'll notice that i i put uh, the the soul lanterns on top of these posts because these yahoos keep finding ways to jump on top of them so i had to move this post over one because this this fence post used to be here, 
But what was happening was the villagers would walk over to this edge and walk off the stairs and take a little bit of damage. So I had to extend the safety railing out. Uh, I had to replace the slab that was here with a lantern because they would walk over here, walk onto the slab, and then fall and take some damage. Uh, I still need a safety railing of some sort over here because they are still managing to get on that post and fall and take damage. Some of them are, are even, for some reason, falling off of here. Yeah, see, like that, like that. Dude, there's stairs. There's stairs. They're right over there. You, you, you're going to make insurance rates around this castle go high. Uh, <clears throat> and I had to remove that one because these yahoos were like crowding up on top of the station here and like five or six of them were going here and then one of them was jumping over to the slab and then they were getting pushed off and down the stairs so i had to swap the head slab out for yeah like that just like that thank you for demonstrating i i appreciate that i i had to put some safety rails around the fountain because they were jumping into the fountain and then falling down and taking damage because they weren't staying at least in the water. They, they were they were moving forward and falling on the stair. <clears throat> Villagers. It, it's a wonder you find any alive in the world at all. Uh, I also had to swap out the, the couches. Um, if you remember, I originally had beds, two beds set up back to back, so it looked like a couch. I now have planks there. Because these guys were taking up the beds, and for whatever reason, having workstations, villagers, and beds makes it a, a breeding ground for cats. And I was having a cat infestation all over the place. And uh, I, I just, as much as I, I kind of like the idea of cats running around to add a little life to the build, I don't like the idea of cats running around because I, I'm, not a, I'm not a cat. Look, do, do you see any paintings of cats? No. No. Where, where are you going to sleep now, though? I, I'm, I'm still going to sleep in my bed. Uh, the one You've thing never I... never slept in your bed. Yeah, I have, when that was the only thing there. I'll, oh, also, for this chair, I had to do the same thing, because these guys, even though this is the double carpet and they're not supposed to be pathfinding past it, were still trying to make their way over to the bed that was tucked in the wall here. So that had to get changed, too. Um, and since that is around the corner and through the doors, apparently they're not pathing there. Uh, oh, also, also, you'll notice I don't have any of the, uh, lo uh, looms. Yeah, looms as empty bookshelves downstairs because I was releasing villagers to get these guys. And these guys, instead of picking the open workstations that they could actually work at, were attaching themselves to the looms and the bookshelf and then not working at them because there was a block on top of them. Villagers. Now, one thing, I, I don't mind the slab bench like this. I just kind of wish that there was one thing that I could do. I kind of wish I could either make a wool half slab so it would at least look like a padded, padded chair. Uh, although, since we can't get concrete slabs or terracotta slabs i doubt we're ever going to get wool slabs um the the other thing that would make it really nice would be the ability to put a carpet on a bottom slab or even stairs for that matter like i would love to take some red carpet and run it down the stairs and have it actually conform to the hitbox of the stairs likewise for this and uh if you're watching my Twitter, you'll notice I had another idea of something that would be really nice to have. And uh, that is why Arcadius is here, so we can get a little more back and forth and it's not just me yammering uh, incoherently. And that is, uh, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, what should the next update be? And Wells Knight on Twitter said, oh, the inventory update. You know, and inventory management has been a much discussed thing uh, because, again, this is the same inventory space we started with. Uh, you'll notice that we have a few more blocks to worry about. Like we didn't used to have rockets. We didn't used to have a lot of things that, that you could use that space for. Um, 
you know, there weren't as many varieties of wood. And not just varieties of wood in general, but, you know, stripped wasn't an option. The bark logs wasn't an option. Um, go go look at builds from version 1.10. Like, when, you know, I remember when granite was new. <laughs> and that's before they added stairs, slabs, walls, and polished. There was granite, diorite, and andesite. And, and, and that was nice. That was three extra blocks. Ooh. Now, now look at how many we have. And that's just if you want to use those. And don't forget, we got Blackstone and all its variety. And uh, we now have Deep Slate, which is amazing. And all in all its variety, and more so than anything else, too. Uh, and, and so, again, don't hear the complaint. that this is, I am not complaining about having a variety of blocks. Because let's be honest, this... Wouldn't look as awesome without the variety of blocks. Same, same with the other room. It would not look as awesome without the variety of blocks. If we didn't have the... the Concrete slabs and stairs. Yeah, yeah. Don't, er, don't, don't get me started on that yet. Um, you know, if we didn't have the variety that we have, this, this wouldn't be half of what it is. Uh, but we need, we need more space. I mean, let's be honest. This mountain base feels big because it is bigger than any mountain base I have built. But, I mean, th this is like, you know, Impulse SV's sub-basement. Um, so, so, if I'm having inventory problems with that, can you imagine some of the bigger guys? Or the people doing grander things in survival? Because, again, if you're in creative, the, you, this is a non-issue. Um, but in survival, it's an issue. So... After watching one of Green's videos, and uh, there's been an uh, and some of the other discussion back and forth about ways to deal with this, like Azuma had a uh, a, a video that he did a long while back about possible uses for enchanted shulker boxes, where you could get shulker boxes that would automatically pick up. Uh, block. So you put a, a placeholder in the shulker box, and then as you pick stuff up in the world, it would fill the shulker box. And likewise, when you use pick block, if you didn't have it in your inventory inventory, it would grab a stack out of the shulker box. Which would be another way to do it. Um, but my idea was more of having another torso slot for a backpack. So you would have two torso slots... And that would, and, and to be a little bit more generous, you could have any two of elytra armor and a backpack. So if you wanted armor and an elytra, you could do that. If you wanted a backpack and an elytra, you could do that. If you wanted a backpack and armor, you could do that. Y you get the idea. Um, and so what you could do is you could go take some leather over to a crafting bench make an H of leather. Oh, I didn't realize. I forgot that was the recipe for uh, leather horse armor. Shoot. Uh, gonna have to think of a different recipe then. <coughs> Doggone it. Uh, <laughs> make it a square with a hole in the middle. I mean, that's what you want. Yeah. Okay, that works. That works too. And I mean, that's supposedly or the same amount of even uh, better. That that's the same amount of leather to make a leather leather armor. So if that's not enough leather to make a backpack, I don't know what is. You're doing Actually, this wrong. Even better than that, do <laughs> one less. So take the leather off the top and put a string. That way, it's one of those pull string knapsacks. Oh, okay. So you're you're talking like uh, uh, there you go, rest. I said bloop. It, it, that, that is supposed to make it all right, right? So do something like that. Where it's uh, uh, like a cauldron of leather and a string on top. Just like that. That's the one. Okay. I can get behind that. that that's a recipe that works. Uh, but the idea is that if you use leather, you get a heavy backpack. Which adds either two or three more rows of inventory. I, I couldn't decide which was more appropriate for a heavy backpack. Two rows or three rows. And now that I'm looking at the inventory, three rows would double your normal inventory, not counting the hotbar. And I 
don't know if that would be... I don't know if that would be right or not. Does that make sense? Does my conundrum make sense? It does. Okay. Uh, so I guess maybe that would just be two rows of inventory instead of three. And then likewise... Uh, oh, I don't have enough. Oh, all right. As long as I'm not running anything through there just yet. Uh, do the same, but with rabbit leather... And you get a light backpack, which would be one extra row of inventory. The differentiator between the two would be that a light backpack has less space, but no impediment to movement. So in other words, you're not going to, you're not going to go through hunger faster as you're walking and jumping your, your rockets. If you're flying, will, will take you the same distance they normally would. And to do that you get less space. With the heavy backpack, you get more space, but as you're walking, your hunger uh, goes down faster because you're carrying more weight. And likewise, your flight duration will be cut by some percentage. Uh, in the Twitter thread, I initially said by 50%, but that seems a little harsh unless you're actually doubling inventory. So if the heavy backpack was three full rows of inventory, then I can see cutting your uh, flight duration in half because uh, you, you just went from a light encumbrance to a medium encumbrance. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm mixing my games. Um, but but some, some sort of movement penalty in exchange for the, the extra capacity. Uh, so and that, you're saying to give us another chest slot is that what i'm here or a back slot yeah so so you would have uh one more torso slot that would let you do any two of elytra armor and uh and backpack well wouldn't in looking at this from a logical standpoint wouldn't the wings and the backpack be uh exclusive items like you can't have a backpack in your wings function um well i mean except if you if you look at the way the wing the wings go you could tuck a backpack under there come on Where, where's where's the button there we go i should probably not be doing this in uh second person yeah you know, i i could see i could see a backpack being tucked in there without it interfering with the wings outside of the weight concern and, and that's why i was saying have a light and a heavy that way people who would much rather have the full duration of flight can do that and those who really prefer the capacity now have to decide do do i want to go further or do i want more inventory well, that is a question uh, because I agree that it shouldn't be just a, a free for all. You get everything, everything all the time. E you know, even shulker boxes are an opportunity cost. Uh, that that yes, that shulker box is extra. You know, that's a whole single chest of storage in a shulker box. Uh, but you're still eating up inventory space with that shulker box, and in exchange for so much in a dense thing you have to put it down to interact with it and then pick it back up whereas with the backpack you just have one or two more rows pop up in, in between this top half and there visibly separate so that way your backpack's inventory could be tracked as a container and whatever you put in the backpack stayed in the backpack uh, that way you could even have, you know, uh, different setups ready to go. Like, I, I've, I've got shulker boxes that are set up for particular tasks. So this is the stuff that I put together for my last end run. It'd be kind of nice to just, you know, tuck a bunch of that into a backpack. So that way if I go for another round in the end, I, I can just put on my, put on my end backpack and go. My knapsack on my back. No, I won't sing that. Um, <clears throat> the other the other thing that I was thinking too is just like with shulker boxes and chests 
it would be nice to have a way to to load and unload. Uh, on the one hand, it's one of those things where oh, <laughs> I just realized that's a uh, because there's nothing to unload. That's not going to work the way it's supposed to. <laughs> where did my box go now? Oh, my box went through storage. Okay. All right, I'll find it down at the end in a minute. <laughs> oh, got it. <laughs> and that's what I get for planar. All right, so another, so you know, you might want to load or unload a backpack. Like if I if I'm running around the world in a heavy backpack adventuring because you know we're trying to gather all the resources, and I ran by the desert to grab the desert stuff, and I, I ran by the jungle to get the jungle stuff, and now I need to bring it back to the base, and you know. Uh, put 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 the backpack on an armor stand over a hopper. And the reason why I specify on an armor stand over the hopper is like if you're doing like if you're over here doing redstone, the last thing you want is the fact that you're walking over a hopper to start pulling from your backpack. So to make sure that it is an intentional thing as opposed to an accidental thing, uh, dispense it onto an armor stand because you have to intentionally put it on an armor stand. It doesn't just happen. And that way the hopper knows to pull or push items to or from the backpack is if it's on an armor stand. For that matter, make the dispensers dispense it. You can use a dispenser to put anything in the head slot, the elytra or chest plate, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this this should be no different than that. And as the game really doesn't like the if this then this codes, from what I understand, the yeah that kind of complexity. Why not remove the distance travel per? rocket mm -hmm. and instead have all three rocket levels go the same distance except that you need whichever rocket size per number of slots you're currently using Oh, like a tier one rocket's not going to get your you know frumpy butt off the floor <laughs> if you're wearing armor and <laughs> yeah Wait, wait, are you saying diamond armor is a little uh, weighty? Does does the netherite make it lighter or heavier? Is that an answer I even need to pretend to <laughs> contemplate? I don't, I don't know. Just one of those random thoughts. Random thoughts by a non-junior. Like oh wait, no, that was Jack or... Candy. Uh. <laughs> the stuff's good enough that it withstands like. Explosions, I think. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wait. Are there? Why are there carrots in the potato box? Ha, 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 did one of you pick up a, a, a forbidden vegetable or something? Yes. Uh, no, I see potatoes. Did I, did I put the wrong thing back in the wrong box? I, I find that a little more likely. Uh, okay, anyway. So, you know, th that's kind of the idea that I had bouncing about is just, you know, setting up uh, an inventory option that was, you know, I like the idea of the bundle, and the bundle should be a thing. The biggest issue with the bundle is the interaction method. Like, it's great for grabbing miscellany, like... I picked up two of this and one of that and four of that, and I just I just need to condense down my inventory into a slot. And for that purpose, the bundle does really well. The, the biggest gripe with the bundle is you either need to just overturn the whole bag on the ground and then pick everything up until you find what you're looking for, or you can pull stuff out in the reverse order of the way you put it in. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so again, it's one of those things that seems like a really nice idea, but um, the, the execution leaves something to be desired. And, and so, you know, the, the, that's 
part of why I was trying to go with something with a different mechanism. Sorry, while we're talking, I was going to try to put Dark Oak and see if I like that better. Oh no, 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 nope, nope. Because the, uh, the bookshelves are oak tone to begin with. That, that, yeah, they blend in better like that. Never mind. Problem solved. <laughs> Dilemma past. <laughs> so I mean, what say you? You you saw the you saw the video. Um, makes sense. Yeah, no, kind of, sorta, ish. Yeah, no, that's pretty much my take on it. Just uh, yeah, we need we need to handle the storage issue. Especially if you're going to add more blocks, and you really yeah. should add more blocks, because adding more blocks keeps the game fresh, it makes designing new things possible, otherwise we're all just going to keep making the same Star Destroyer over and over again. And uh, I, I'll, put, I'll gently this. push back on that one. I, I think you can get a variety of builds with the existing block palette. Uh, I get adding stuff to make things, keep things fresh, but I don't... I think it's going to be a long while before you exhaust all the design possibilities with the blocks that are in there now, given the variety oh, of I things that happened with what was done before that. Soon. <laughs> I just said it was going to happen. <laughs> um, oh, and don't forget that with 1.19 comes mangroves and all the stuff that are, are part of the mangrove forest. Or, sorry, the mangrove swamp. The what? Hmm? The what? The mangrove. It's a new tree. So it it's a more reddish type wood. And that gives you mangrove, logs, wood, stripped wood, planks, stairs, slabs, etc., 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 all the way through, including boats. Uh, Does and it be mangoes? No, mangrove. Um, and in addition to the leaves, you get mangrove root blocks, which are rather unique and kind of interesting. They, they, you can put one down and waterlog them and the water stays in the root block and waterlogged or not, uh, you can pass a redstone signal through the roots which you can't do with leaves. Of course, I open up the one that I don't have any leaves for. Uh, the leaves. <laughs> um, also, 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 they're going to start letting you... I, I think it's in 1.19. I can't remember if it made the final release or not. But I'm pretty sure they set it up so you can now waterlog leaf blocks as well. <laughs> Uh, which means if you're trying to use the, the water bucket to MLG, <laughs> don't do that over a leaf because you'll waterlog the leaf. <laughs> yeah. They also added the froggies, which, uh, I, yeah. That that's a take it or leave it. I mean, I like the animation. I like the, I like that they that the frog lights are a thing. So if a frog eats a small magma cube, he spits back out a frog light. And the color awesome. of the frog light depends on which one of the three frogs ate it. I'm digging it. Yeah. Uh, Raiseworks has a wonderful video outlining all the changes and uh, somebody else had another one that was pretty good. Uh, there were there were a couple of good ones that, you know, ran through all the options, but those were the two that really kind of stuck with me. We still got a bunch of books down at storage, right? 
because I want to see if this channeling guy will actually, uh, what else he's got. I've got some of these guys leveled up. Some of them are almost leveled up. Um, <laughs> if you want to help run around <laughs> leveling up librarians, I won't say no. <laughs> and bring a couple of stacks of brown wool for that stupid shepherd. I, I thought I'd kept the two guys of black wool. No, I didn't. Uh, I, I got one, one of the two guys that trades in black wool. Uh, was freed up for other opportunities. Oh. <laughs> it's permanent job changes, I'll tell you what. Aw. Yep. He was permanently relocated. Mm. <laughs> and and please, please don't misunderstand what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to recreate a trading hall over there. I just I just want a little more Oh, I don't Motion. It's your bill. Yeah. Do you? <laughs> I, I just want a little more, a little more life and motion in there. Uh, oh, I get it. It's, it looks awesome. It's getting there. Uh, I still, I got a couple of things. I got a couple of things that I want to do in the other side now, but uh, I gotta, I gotta find a way to re redesign the doors so that way they're idiot proof, uh, villager proof, and. Uh, Still, still look appropriately epic. Uh, let me get back and I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Because again, I found out the hard way. The the double carpet it does not stop them from moving. Or uh, it does not stop them from traversing the carpet. It's supposed to. It's supposed to keep them from pathfinding across. It does not. Mm. Now, what it does do, though, is because the carpet is that one pixel higher, their foreheads can't fit under a two-block-high doorway with a carpet under it. So they get here and literally get stuck. But that's why I had to add a couple of blocks down here because these guys kept running in here and then some of them were getting lost in the basement and, and one guy one guy w went to visit those down there. Uh, trying to herd them all back up to the top was, was a less than fun adventure. <laughs> that's why when the, la when the guy finally ran out the front door, I was kind of tired of moving people around. Uh, so I'd really like to have this be a three by three door again, but I need to make sure that these guys don't go running out the front door the second I decide to, to venture out. <laughs> I forgot the books. I flew all the way over there, grabbed the wool, and forgot the books. Actually, I don't need... Uh, let me see what we got over there first. And if we don't have as many as I thought, we do have tons of sugar cane and leather. And a fly that's right in front of me. Shoe fly, don't bother me. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> yeah, some of the earlier renditions of the backpack, I had actually thought about um, using a chest or a barrel. So, two leather straps with a chest in the middle or a barrel in the middle. It's like, nah. That, that's, nah. There's just something. There's just something just a smidgen wrong with that one. I don't know, man. That would be pretty funny. It's the uh, it's the oceanic backpack. Or 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 is that the third tier of backpack that adds a full three rows? Like you got the you got the rabbit hide one that adds a row, the leather one that adds two rows, and the barrel strap to your back that adds three. <laughs> And you ain't flying with a barrel on your back. <laughs> yeah. 
you, 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 sorry, you lost your aerodynamics. <laughs> like, like you, you go from no flight problems to some flight problems to, uh, we have a failure to lift. <laughs> 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 no flight problems, some flight problems. <laughs> you kidding, right? <laughs> yeah. To to you float semi gracefully to the ground. <laughs> All right, you're already leveled up. You're already leveled up. You guys keep running around. I I need to name all these guys too, but I'm not sure. Ooh. Oh yeah, that's right. This guy's got Silk Touch and Fortune Three, and Silk Touch for only nine. Mm. Yeah. I was kind of happy when I saw that, too. What's next? Huh? Oh, he's got he's got Silk Touch for nine twice. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I could I could have done that if I tried. <laughs> he's like, I heard you like Silk Touch, so I got you some Silk Touch. Mm-hmm. Well, go look at your station or something. Dude, I, I need to look at your station. You're welcome, Rest. Surely I got some paper around here somewhere. I, I've been depleting my private stock of sugar cane, too. <laughs> Mostly because I've been too lazy to run all the way out to the sugarcane farm. That's a yes. <laughs> Is it that one more? Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> that one paper trade was enough. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, you are a master. All right, you got the little diamond belt thingy. Now, you, you need to turn yourself around there, good sir. Oh, you're leveled up. Yeah, and for some reason, I got a bunch of librarians that keep trying to path into the potion brewery. And it's like, guys, no. No, don't, don't fraternize with them. Oh, there's my channeling guy. How did you get all the way down here? Never mind. Don't answer that. Uh. uh really? You're going to do this to me too? <sighs> Fine. Where, 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 where's the shepherd that'll take the brown wool? That'll at least get me some emeralds to work with. Oh, he is already a master. I forgot I leveled him up. Hi, friend. All right, that's got to be enough. Uh, that's got to be enough levels to go buy something for. No, not you. I need to name these guys. I've got to name these guys. Is that gonna be enough? Are you a master now? You are. Sweet. Oh, he's got mending for twenty. I need I need emeralds for bookshelves though. <laughs> that sounds like a bad international trade. Hi guys. Would you like to contribute to the uh Anon Junior Needs Emeralds Fund? It's tax deductible. Might even save your life. It's also kind of funny that uh, most of these guys in here, I, I ran them out fairly close to each other so he's got blindness and I think regen because the effect disappeared too quickly for me to tell he's got jump and weakness but this guy is also jump and weakness 
and this guy is also blindness and regen. So I've got two blindness and regen and two jump and weakness. Which was like, uh, okay. My friend. Do do do. Buy something from me. Stop costing me emeralds. Uh, <sighs> or somebody who will buy these books. I, preferably somebody that could use the leveling too. Ooh, ooh, you need leveling. Oh, there we go. Oh, he's also got uh, piercing and sharpness. get next. Nope, stop running away. Uh, I'd really like you to stop selling me stuff and buy something from me. Some oh. a book and quill. Or ink. Oh, I should probably go to sleep. They're, they're all like, dude, we keep banker's hours. <laughs> what do you, what, get out of here with that. <laughs> what do you think this is? Walmart? <laughs> Come back in the morning. So other than the obvious concrete slabs and stairs, is there anything that you can think of that we might want to like? Hey, Mo Yang, I got some ideas for you. Looks good to me. No, that's right. It's not time yet. Nothing, or are you just not, not that I can yeah. think of off the top of my head. Nothing that's not immediately in my mind game breaking. So, I mean, it doesn't have to be game breaking. It could be a really nice quality of life thing too. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is the first thing that comes to mind, and it's about the only thing that my sleep addled brain can come up with is it would be game break so oh. it's not really worth sharing <laughs> okay basically uh, looks good to me I don't know how expensive you would need to make it to make it feasible but have a uh compass of some expense and when you broke it like completely broke it mm -hmm. it would magically teleport you back to its lodestone oh that's interesting um although have you have you heard what they did with the compass in the deep dark no, I haven't heard much of anything that's going on in the um, expansions. There's a special type of compass disc or something. I forget exactly what item type it is. But, oh, it, it does end up being a compass. Sorry, it, it is definitely a compass of some sort. Um, but what makes it special is... 
when you die, it points to your death location. Cub fan, that's who had the other video that was really good about covering what was in the update. Interesting. So, so it, now obviously you're going to want to have said compass in uh, <laughs> it, it uh, a uh, 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 ender chest or something. You're not going to want to have it on you because if you have it on you, uh, it doesn't really. Do you? Well, well, you, you it know, definitely points to where you died. <laughs> you know. But definitely. But the Without idea fail. is, you go to the ender chest, you you pick up this compass, and it will direct you back to where you died. Hmm. Which okay. may be really nice. Because that 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 is a nice little quality of life adjustment. Because you know, we we've got the data pack that tells you the coordinates of where you died and tells you to go get your stuff but uh <laughs> I think I got them all now of course I don't know these guys these guys are always moving around which is good but we get off the furniture <laughs> oh yeah uh because I got the mini HUD in the top left corner there it tells me the the hit points so I do periodically try to go back and like you know he took half a heart of damage uh he's at full health he, he's he's at 15 and 20 and each point each hit point is half a heart so uh that's what two and a half hearts like seriously dude why it's okay uh yeah, he's down to 17 for some reason. Like, the, these guys are going to make me go through all my stupid healing potions. Because every now and again, I got to go find them all and, and hit, them with a, hit them with a splash potion of health. Yeah, these guys are fine. Oh, wait, no. How are you down to 17? What have you done? What have you done? How did you hurt yourself in here? There's nothing here tall enough for you to hurt yourself. How? How? Father Dan. Seriously. Well, now I feel the need to go check the other guys that I thought were safe. No, you're at full health. You're at full health. You're at full health. You're okay. So all the craftsmen in the room full of cauldrons of lava, swirling blades, fires—they're all fine. The people in the lobby, however, are not. The people in what is arguably the safest room in the whole stupid mountain, because there's nothing you can jump off of that's gonna that's gonna <sighs> Deep breath. <laughs> Breathe in. Breathe out. <laughs> and get one more round of potions done too. <laughs> I just, like, guys, how? Th this should not be that hard. You say that. Yeah, yeah, and yet here we are. I mean, like, what about you? No, no, you, you're at you're full health. You're at full health. You're at full health. You're at full health. Wonderbar. Actually... I kind of wish you could give a villager a suspicious stew and they'd eat it. Because <laughs> then I could give these jokers those regen stews and... <laughs> Alright. Yeah, no, they're fine. So, so, my farmers are fine. My industrial workers are somehow fine. But my librarians are, I don't know, getting paper cut to death? I, I, 
Did 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 one of the potion brewers like drop a flask and <laughs> and Wait, her... <laughs> see what happened? Was. I, I was I was handling the potion bottle, and Brother Ted over there bumped into me. Anyway, now now that I got this library here in the back corner, it doesn't feel like useless space. Like I don't feel a need to put something right here because I do want it to feel open, just not like, you know, here's a bunch of empty space. So, you know, I've got something useful across there, something useful across there. The opening doesn't feel empty because we got these two little sitting you know, lounge areas. Uh, I thought about putting something here in the center, but that just, that felt like it was going to overcrowd. So, you know, you come in the door, you got the fountain, you got some useful space over there and over there. Uh, I had long settled in on the balcony being about right. Because again, it's got that same sense of openness without, um, without feeling crowded. But there's stuff. Uh, the workrooms feel about right off of either side. Now I need to do something with back here. I was originally going to try to do the redstone for storage. And have this be like a giant storage warehouse. But the, the space just didn't work out. I, I don't have enough mountain to do that in the middle of the room. Without it looking super ugly. Oh, and Arcadius, since you didn't see, um, my puffer fish door. I also found out the hard way that a cat can set off the puffer fish door. Oh, neat. So there, uh, let's see if I can get the camera to, to look just right. So inside that minecart is a puffer fish. The block on this side is full of water, so he doesn't die. And just on that side is a gold pressure plate. So when he puffs up, he presses down the gold pressure plate enough to to depower, to run power, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to get the pistons to retract. Huh. So the pistons are extended, and when he puffs up, it triggers the pressure plate, which pulls the pistons back. Well, that's nifty. <laughs> yeah, it, it only took five puffer fish and three of my own lives. Uh, I, I don't think those puffer fish were uh, volunteering for the service there. Uh, well, you know, if they'd have just stayed in the stupid minecart like I told them to. Um. Uh, I... <laughs> So anyway, uh, in this area, I know I want to get a bunch of stonemasons and maybe some other worker types and make this back area a little more industrial. Um, although I just realized that I'm going to have to make sure I idiot-proof the stairs down into the next level. Uh, <laughs> I already put some blocks across the doorway so their tall foreheads can't crawl through, and I, I hate it. Uh, I really wish there was a way to barrier that without putting blocks because I, I like the you know I like having that bigger doorway but that double carpet isn't enough to stop them sadly so I don't know that, that's another problem for another time uh, I think I remember something about magma cubes or magma blocks uh, stopping their pathfinding and as long as you put it under carpet, it wouldn't do anybody any harm, but it would stop them from trying to walk across it. I haven't tried that yet, mostly because I, if one of these jokers dies because of that, uh, I'm going to be really, really mad. <laughs> well, I'd say you might as well just go ahead and suck that up. <laughs> uh, well, no, what I was you thinking, of, what I was thinking of doing was now that I got a little more area down here open again, 
I might pull up one of the villagers and set a square of magma cubes under carpets and, and see if he'll leave it or not. And that way, if he dies on the way out, I haven't invested anything in him. And, you know, that, that sounds so wrong. That sounds so wrong. Anyway, you'll notice the basalt generator isn't down there anymore. I moved it into this little closet over here. I actually compacted it down a little bit. Uh, so you can hit the button up here, and it works just like normal. And I ended up putting a uh, an obsidian block there because I didn't want to have to worry about accidentally poking through if I did an AFK session. And right now I've just got the two double chests worth of storage. But I was actually thinking about taking that and putting it, like, here? And then hiding it under a basalt and uh, deep slate pile. So it looks like the generator is under a pile of stone. Get a couple of stone cutters around the edges and set that. So that way the uh, the, the stone masons will... will go over to the pile of basalt and deep slate when they're at their work time. Just like when it's work time, these guys all come down here, go to the library for a little bit, and then go about their work, and then later come back to work at the library a little bit. <laughs> Except like now when it's 2300, and they're all like, dude, this ain't Walmart. We're, we're on... We're standing on a rabbit's head for some reason. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, seriously, guys. This is why I have safety railing. Why are you standing on the bell? Did anybody say standing on the bell was the congregation? No. And, and I... I Because <laughs> you know you don't want the answer. I have my own little private study. I have my own little private study. I moved something else around on over here, but I don't remember what. These guys, <laughs> especially this one, uh, he he's close enough to the mountainside that if there's zombies on the mountainside, he'll start doing the the thing that parrots do. I don't have a jukebox around here anywhere. I just realized that. Will you stop that. <laughs> where where? Where should I put a jukebox? Hmm. Because there should be music. There should be tunes. I don't think I have any records, though. I mean, I'm not going to play any records, but... library? No. <laughs> do, do I set up like a little stereo in the corner over here? <laughs> it's over by the table. I almost want to replace... Stop that. Don't make me silence you. 
Where, where should I rip out under here and put it put it uh, as a part of the bookshelf? Hmm. I don't know. That just looks a little too symmetrical with an empty bookshelf in the middle like that. That could work. No, it's built around the bookshelf. Oh. Or the bookshelf's built around it. Yeah, so do something like that. Oh no, that's not gonna work. Um. Oh! <laughs> Sometimes the efficiency is too much. Hi guys. <laughs> Just dropping in. Don't mind me. There we go. So I know the jukebox is on the right side, but that way it looks a little more like a stereo. <laughs> there you go. Does this one have an eight track? Kids ask your parents. Wait, uh, no, probably like more like grandparents. One, two, uh -huh, uh -huh. Looks like it's got like a twelve disc changer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. Vinyl's back, so you know we we could always do that. Discs are long enough to be vinyls. Yeah. Vinyls is the only thing in the game, so, you know. Yeah, true. I forgot about that part. Oh, I, I finally just put one of the statue's books in a item frame over here, too. Because I kept needing to run back and forth. At some point, I'm going to come back through and give these books on the floor ironic names of some sort. Like A Tale of Two Villages. <laughs> but it, but I I gotta come up with more more Minecrafty punny names like that. A village too far. Oh, a fistful of emeralds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somebody somebody mentioned that uh, one of the one of the legal Twitter accounts that I follow. Um, was mentioning that the four Sergio Leone um, ser movies were the best collection. And I'm like, wait, I thought there was only three. A Fistful of Dollars, A Few Dollars More, and The, few, the Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. And apparently Sergio Leone did a fourth one uh, called Once Upon a Time in the West. And that one was, was with uh, Branson. And it is, by all accounts, like the pinnacle of the Spaghetti Westerns with innumerable quotable lines and all that. So I, 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 I may have gone ahead and uh, used some of my digital credits to get the, uh, get the, uh, <laughs> the, the streaming version. And uh, that, that might be on the agenda for this weekend. <laughs> might. I know better. <laughs> of course, I need to get caught up on Kenobi as well. But I don't know. I have heard some very, very mixed. Like, when when, when even Brian Brushwood is going, I mean, it's good as long as you're only 60% engaged. <sighs> and I would completely agree with him. If you stopped at, like, episode one or two. Um, uh, at the time you said that, they were reviewing episodes one, two, and three. Okay. Because there are some spots in there where it's like, I know you're rusty, old man, but why'd you make that choice? Mm -hmm. um, the, the whole Obi-Wan Kenobi is disconnected from the Force 
is the thing that I hear a lot of people complaining about. And I don't know how... I don't know how true to lore that is. Very. It's yeah. not that he's disconnected from the Force, it's that he's not centered. They make that very clear. He is troubled. He is continuously having flashbacks. Every time he sleeps, he's having nightmares. He's Okay, so so this for is... For a better term, he's got PTSD. I, I was getting ready to say, so this is PTSD Kenobi. Yeah, exactly. So until he can recenter himself, no, he's not going to have mastery of the force the way he did in the war. And he's been suffering with this PTSD on his own, hiding for eight years with everyone around him despising him. And they make that clear, too. Like, oh. Uh, the one person on the entire planet that probably knows he's a Jedi is... Uh, oh, Lars and uh, yeah. Baru, and which Lars. and they don't like him at all. Exactly, yeah. they hate his guts, and they make that clear to his face. Which you know, props to them. Yeah, I mean, somebody that could like you know kill you in under a second. <laughs> Mad props <laughs> for that kind of disrespect <laughs> to his face. Whatever, but uh, yeah, until he can recenter himself, he's not going to get the mastery back. Okay, but right now he is because. It's it's like the really old saying, you know, when you go to teach a kid or teach someone to do your job, how you learn more about your job than you would have because you're having to go back and basically relearn it yourself. Yeah. Um, in protecting Leia the way he's having to do, which by the way, I don't think Leia should be out here. This doesn't make any sense. Yada yada yada. The first time he she ever met him should. Should have been on the but Death anyway, Star. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, I'm, I'm going to digress from that point. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because her entire line in A New Hope is my father's stories about you. Yeah. Like, it, it implies that she's never met him. You know? Yeah. Anyway, going back to the the story at hand maybe maybe she gets her mind wiped at the end of the series who knows i don't know or this is one of those well i mean it happened when she was a kid and who's going to remember that as an adult although she's eight i i that's not <laughs> <laughs> well and i was Tell also going to say uh j just for uh, just from the clips and discussions i i've heard these are not exactly your typical like youthful I experienced it and forgot it type stuff either. No, not at all. She's kidnapped. She's like, I mean, yeah. I don't want to ruin anything, but there you go. Um, but even then, by the time you hit episode four, he is showing, I, I won't so he, say he's showing like mastery of the force, but he is showing enough control that he is able to hold back um countless countless tons like how how heavy is ocean pressure at yeah a certain depth i mean he's basically holding glass shattered glass back like as it's being pressed inward by ocean pressure okay i mean so he's got enough that he's sweating as he's doing it <laughs> but He's got enough that he's doing that, and he's still got enough cognizant ability that he's got his lightsaber out, he's ready to defend himself if necessary, and I think he even does bat one or two bolts away as he's doing this. Okay. Um, it is just... To see him... Because at first... I was right there on the bandwagon. I was like, oh man, they've messed up. They've screwed up. This is horrible. This is, you know, horse baloney. You know, it's it's just so bad. <laughs> Bull feathers. And to, yeah. Yeah. To, and to see them go through the episodes, because I was bound and determined, you know what? I'm going to at least stick it out for the actor. Uh, yeah. Uh, he did. Ewan McGregor did an amazing job as young Kenobi. Like, yeah. He, he yeah whatever else you may think of any of the rest of that, he did a good job as yep. young Kenobi. Exactly. So, 
I'm watching it. Episode one, I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna smack my head into the desk. <laughs> Episode two, I'm still there. I'm still frustrated. These bad guys are, are you know, yeah, they're at least somewhat true to canon-ish. What I consider canon, not what the mouse considers canon, because what the mouse considers canon uh, is baloney. Yeah, um, I, I was so, get, I was getting ready to <laughs> the, that caveat was about to come out. Yeah, so there's that, um, and then as you as you progress through, there, there's one or two scenarios where people I think are going to have huge offense where he is confronted. He realizes he is got his back to the wall. He does what he can in the situation, taking on X number of enemies, and then more show up. He's already used what he has because he's not in control yet. He doesn't have what it takes. He's still fighting, you know, the internal struggles as well okay. as the external struggles around him. So when they come up behind him, which if he were fully in control of himself, that shouldn't happen. Well, you, you say that, but uh, I, I got to tell you, the the uh, 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 how to how to. If you're about to start talking about Order 66, I'm going to need coffee, and this stream's going to take another two hours. No, no, I wasn't going to oh. go. I wasn't going to go there. I, I was just talking about how it seems like uh, when, when a a a Jedi or a Sith, for that matter, casts Detect Force user, the DC appears to be set by the plot and not by any cognizable metric. Does that make sense? It makes sense. As in, I understand what you're saying. It also doesn't really apply here. A lot of, even in the books, the the Star Wars novelizations and stuff, um, there is techniques for dampening your force ability so that you can hide in the force, they call it. Okay. Um, but then there's also the fact that if you're not in the force, you're just not in the force, and he isn't. He's not centered. He doesn't have it, period. He's not like, you know, Anakin Skywalker, who was just pulsing with it, where you could just, you know, as Qui-Gon Jinn walk past him in a supermarket and be like, oh, hey, hey, we clearly missed you on recruitment day we ah, need to talk. okay um so it's it's not that it's you basically like a submarine ping around you and you're looking for the aura of other force users um and in conjunction with that you're also looking for malice or ill intent and you're looking for some sort of precognition of danger incoming and okay that's more or less how that actually functions it's not that you're just like oh hey jedi there um but well i mean draw... i wasn't think i wasn't thinking you know pinpoint but still no, it seems no, like no, no. You, know. you can pinpoint Oh. It really depends on if they're drawing that much force. Okay. If they are using, if they are drawing, if they are, um, if they're not trying to dampen, if they're, you know, things like that. You can literally be like, okay, well, I mean, this guy is holding enough energy. I can, or he's drawing so much power. Uh, for example, um, well, I kind of figured the force push was a subtle hint that they were a force user. That's. <laughs> <laughs> in, in the game, in in the game of force powers, yeah. <laughs> that is very small potatoes. <laughs> uh, there's actually a video game. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but there is a player in that game. There's a cutscene where he literally, if you take the right paths, reaches to the sky. And there's actually in a book. Mm -hmm. uh, 
new Jedi Order. I don't remember which Jedi Master does it, but both scenarios, they reach up with a hand, grasp a starship. In the case of the video game, it is a Star Destroyer. In the case of the book, I believe it was a cruiser or destroy or a... Uh, uh, I think it was a cruiser. Yeah, it was a cruiser. Um, but in both cases, they reach up, they force grip these ships against the engines and everything, and they just rip them down to the ground. Now, the amount of energy and force use that that takes, you're going to be able to pinpoint who, not only... Okay. where or whatever you're going to be able to tell who this Jedi or Sith is that's how much energy they're going to put out and you're going to be able to do that from across the galaxy and that is like a clear and you know prominent beacon of here I am this is my name this is what I've done um, and the thing with that is, is it's going to take so much energy it's going to leave a mark and a residue on the site where it's used for at least a couple of days if not longer so Um, in theory in episode two yoda could have ripped count dooku's ship out of the sky as he was flying off and maybe ended the death star plans a little earlier If he was prepared, if he had the uh, strength to do so at the time, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. But they... You have to remember Yoda is already late late 800s, almost, you know, 900s and something, I forget. Uh, off the top of my head, he's like 900 and something years old when he meets he, uh, Luke and... You know, the Empire Strikes Back. So, I mean, he's really old already. Yeah. Well, because he, he only gets eighteen more years after <laughs> after after Luke's born, which is the next movie. So, but um, because I mean, you, you get where the thrust of that question was. Uh... Yes. Yes. And in a lot of cases, it comes down to. Does he feel that was necessary? Did he have the will to do that at that time? And this is actually a topic that has been brought up a lot in feeds, uh, if you really want to dig into it. Um, The most popular, because I I think he had plenty of strength. He is Uh, the Grand Master for a reason. Yeah. Um, But you do have two extremely hurt knights right behind you. Um, ones that you have already had to save, like literally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not not figuratively. Literally. Literally. Yeah. Just had to save them. Um, so I think that, and I believe that the, the fan theory that goes along with the idea that he turned around and had to help them because he felt their life force ebbing. Okay. So... So this was more, they were injured to the point that they needed him. They needed medical attention needed. now. Yeah. So while, yes, he could have easily ripped, you know, the ship back down and pulled it back, that would have wasted energy. It would have cost time. And at the end of the day... Time that they didn't have. There you go. That's that's the fan theory, and that's the one I like to stick with because it makes a lot more sense to me when you watch the film scene play out the way it does. Yeah. Because you notice he doesn't spend a lot of time watching the ship go. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, I'll buy that for a dollar. Yeah, it's worth a dollar. <laughs> But uh, back to Kenobi. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very interested to see what happens tomorrow when the next episode comes out. Uh, because he does show signs that he's at least obtaining more of his former connection. 
Um, now, whether he's going to maintain control is a whole other issue because, again, <laughs> we've got that already in play mental uh, disconnect happening from the nightmares and the PTSD and everything. Uh, and it doesn't help what happens in episode, uh, shoot, I think it was three. <laughs> um, definitely doesn't help. It just, th this whole thing strikes me as the current crop of writers at Disney don't know what made the popular characters popular. They don't. And they haven't read a Star Wars novel to save their lives, obviously. Uh, well, whether they read one or not doesn't matter because, you know, the mouse decreed that that was all legends anyway. But uh, be that as it may. Um, I... I, I've noticed that this fly still hasn't gone away. I've noticed that um, uh, when you get something like the Mandalorian, which is a new character, it is pretty well done and very well received. When you get Kenobi, it is not as well done and not well received. When you get Boba Fett, it is very poorly done and very poorly received. Um, not without some, you know... Not without reason. I Not mean, without some reason. <laughs> like again, don't you know? You, you see the the like solo. Uh, I don't think you watched the solo movie, did you? No. Um, solo was a good sci-fi movie, an okay Star Wars movie, a very poor Han Solo movie. Does that make sense? And that's why I didn't watch it. Yeah. yeah. yeah it makes perfect sense. <laughs> I mean, not perfect sense that they did that, but perfect sense in that that's how that went down. Like. No, no, it makes perfect sense that they did that too. Oh, it's, well. When you. But that, that also seems to be one of the, one of the big criticisms popping up with Disney Wars is, is, is that there's, an override, uh, an impetus to make sure that certain things are there, whether they ought to be or not. Yeah, I, I can see that. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm tracking what you're putting down. Yeah. But, uh, I was trying to make sure that that was very, uh, very, very politely put. Yeah, no, I, I got it. I got it. We came across good. Um, yeah, I, I really have nothing nice to say about the mouse. I, I'm watching this strictly for the character. Uh, it, it's obvious to me that they do not care about the source material. And they haven't for a long time. Yeah. The, uh, the story about... Uh, the Clone Wars, the cartoon that was yeah. out for a while, like a long time ago, and it did such injustice to one of the most epic villains in Star Wars history. That uh, Clone Wars, yeah, yeah. Okay, Clone Wars is what brought Thrawn into yeah what is considered uh, canon. Uh, and the, the only reason why I, I sound will... surprised is because it seems that Clone Wars is generally well received. Oh, I'm sure it is by anyone who doesn't understand what they're looking at and for all the beautiful children who love it and wonderful for them 
because I'm sure they enjoyed the scene where the big bad guy, who wasn't actually all that bad because he wasn't well written and he was not the character profile, he was not the general or genius that he was supposed to be, the grand admiral that was elevated even though he wasn't human. I I was gonna go less less in that direction and a little more in um Well it's true. That's yeah. what happened. That's that's how Thrawn got to where he was. He was a military genius. That's just how it is. You cannot hide what the Empire was. Okay? No, no, now, no. I, I was getting at more um at a minimum, Clone Wars at least gave you a a um, uh, it gave you a story that made the characters make sense that was at least befitting most of them. Oh, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. No, not really, not at all. Uh, They did discredit to a lot of characters according to previously put together lore. But again, the mouse said, all those books are out the door. So what we know as those characters is completely gone. So I guess technically I have to accept that Thrawn is not a military genius. Somehow he got elevated to the oh. ranks anyway. And he's dead. Uh, your focus does seem to be on one particular character too. Oh no, I'll go to other characters in a minute. It just really kills me that they killed one of the the best tacticians um, with a bunch of space whales. The rumor is with the upcoming Ahsoka series, they might be bringing Thrawn back and live action this time. Uh huh. How do you how do you bring someone back that was in a hard vacuum? Can can you can you tell me that one? Uh. They float back to the ship. Oh, wait. No. Sorry. Too soon? Mm-hmm. <laughs> no. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, maybe there's a TIE fighter that came and picked him up afterwards. Or I, Actually, I don't even think a TIE fighter could do that. He wasn't, uh, in, a sh- he wasn't in a suit. He was in his uniform. Uh, and, and again, I never got around to finishing the... the I never got around to finishing the Clone Wars series anyway, so... Uh, yeah, it was it was a lot to get through. You would have a yeah, you'd have a lot to catch up on. Not a, not uh, a lot of it's worth catching up. Well, and, and I I started it because I was told that it at least makes the episode three feel less jarring in the transition because you you go from episode two where Anakin and Kenobi together get their butt whooped by Dooku. To <laughs> Sith Lords are our speciality. Like, really? Because the last movie we saw you guys get it handed to you. Um, oh, shoot! <sighs> surprise Creeper is a surprise. Ah, <sighs> 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 Um, you know, so, so again, it's one of those things where, where it just, the, the transition is jarring and they went from master and whiny apprentice to, to actual like friends and buddies in what, oh my, uh, in what felt somewhat unearned at the time. No, no, I agree with that. Uh, no. Uh, get, get over there. No, no, no. You guys are blocked in. I got... Where's my Minecraft Snickers? <laughs> 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 
time, time for a uh, intermission and some coffee. So whatever. No, no. Although I can hear a uh, little endermite somewhere. Where? Ah, there you are. Anyway, so it makes that, that transition from the Anakin and Kenobi relationship we saw in Episode 2 to what we saw in Episode 3 uh, less less jarring, less bad, less weird. E, all of the above. Uh, yeah. Most of the movies... Um... And I, I just, I kind of hate that... Because of that, the movie is almost, or the TV series is almost like homework. Like, like you can't just sit back and enjoy. You you have to have you have to have done your homework first, and then you can enjoy the movie more. And, and I find that to be a problem. But it seems to be again a, a problem, a little more endemic of. Disney stuff given that uh, you get the same you get the same issue with um, with uh, some of the the, the uh, Marvel stuff like apparently the the entirety of Wasn't there a thing you had to watch the, uh, I don't know, what was her name? WandaVision. Yeah. If, yeah. if you didn't watch WandaVision, then the, the, oh man, he blew up one of my expensive trap doors. Then the, uh, the words, how do they work? Then Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness doesn't quite make sense. Yeah, but that's another thing. You have a headlined character, and he's... Yeah, he, he's kind of yeah. secondary to his own story, because it really is about yeah. Wanda. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Why didn't she just get her own film? Yeah, well, you know, and now so, there, there are some people who are a little bit a little bit more generous in uh, in in pointing out not not incorrectly that uh, part of part of the problem is COVID really messed with the production schedule. So things that were supposed to happen in a certain order didn't happen in the order that was going to that was supposed to be. Um, okay, whoop de do. That doesn't change the fact that. A script is made that puts the main character on a sideline to a side character. <laughs> yeah. Give that give the quote unquote side character the front stage on their own movie. And if you're going to do this to the script, then change the name of the movie. Don't tell me it's <laughs> a uh, Doctor Strange movie. Just tell me it's a Wanda movie. Yeah. Give it a fun little name for whatever it really is. Don't try and sell me on something that's not. That seems to be uh, I don't know false advertising at the Oh, it defi it's definitely piece. disingenuous. Don't don't <laughs> don't hear what I'm not saying on that one. It is it is very definitely uh, uh, disingenuous. And that is that is part of the problem. Is is this just not it's not right. But the problem is, is not a lot of people are going to say anything. Uh, not enough people. So they're, it's not going to change. Either the bottom line's got to hit them in the face and they'll change it then. Or, you know, people have to say something. But who's going to say something to the mouse, right? Well, uh, <laughs> Gina, <laughs> Gina, what's her name, will, uh, will probably say something. Because what are they going to do, fire her again? Well, man, that's a crying shame. She wasn't a bad character. I liked no. her character. Yeah. 
I really, I really wonder what they're going to do about her character. Like, who are they going to bring in to replace her? Oh, and, and that reminds me to the earlier discussion. Uh, the Mandalorian came out great, and that's that's a character that doesn't have, you know, that that's a new character. Exactly, and you can do that. Play around with new ideas. Congratulations, you actually had one. Yeah. Don't go back and mess up the stuff that's already been made. You, you had one, and it worked out quite nicely. Yes. Don't try and, you know, play around with nostalgia, especially when you're not going to do it right. <laughs> that... Just, just... <laughs> well, that, that is the crux of it, isn't it? If you're not going to yeah, do it right. You'd... Yeah, exactly. You do you. Leave our stuff alone. You've already said, you know, our stuff doesn't belong in your universe. Fine. Leave my universe alone. You go play with yours. <laughs> I'm taking my ball and I'm going home. <laughs> but. That's my feelings on the matter. As far as that goes. But you're right, they, when they make something up on their own, good. It turns out good okay. Stuff. Mostly. Yeah. Most of it. Yeah, well, okay. Yeah, well, you know, but but again, you know, Bo Boba Fett was not, was not well done. I don't, no, no, we're not, we're just going to leave it at mm. Boba Fett was not well mm. done. Uh, mm. <laughs> mm. 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 Don't go there. Don't go there. <laughs> Why'd you bring it up? It's your fault. You brought it up. We're going there. <laughs> you shouldn't have brought it up if you didn't want to brought it up. <laughs> uh, okay. Fine. Poor guy. Yeah. That's not Boba Fett. That's a clone. That, that's that's another clone pretending to be Boba Fett. Uh, I was Boba getting ready to say, character. technically, isn't he a clone anyway? I mean... <laughs> yes, yes, that's a clone <laughs> pretending to be Boba Fett. That's not actually Boba Fett. Or, or are you saying it's a clone of a clone? In which case, uh, I'm going to need a flowchart. No, that's just a clone. He, the war's over. He's <laughs> pretending to be Boba Fett to try and get some renown and some money because he doesn't want to live on the street. <laughs> The real Boba Fett is out there, and <laughs> when he got his ship and helped the Mandalorian in the last season, he left. He, he pawned off the assassin on the guy on Tatooine, and he left. Mm -hmm. that, that's what that's what's really happened. Okay. Because there is no way that guy <laughs> is Boba Fett. Not a chance. I'm going to have to seriously redo this entrance. I got more materials now. That was mostly cobblestone and tough because that's all I have. But that, I, no, another day, another day, another day. Another project, another day. Do you need another soul lantern? Because only having one there is weird. <laughs> soul lantern. Yeah. Okay. So what else okay. are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so we need to we need to hurry past Boba before. I yeah. No. I yeah, mo well, I mean, mostly I just wanted I wanted I wanted uh, some reflection and feedback on the on the whole backpack idea and, and you know or if there was an alternative way that i was kind of missing out on no i think you got it covered sounds good because that, that I, I i really like i really like that idea i just don't know I mean, I hope it'll happen, but uh, we we also been hoping for concrete slabs and stairs and walls and terracotta slabs and stairs and walls. Like we we should have a block parity update that does those. Um, I've also uh, it would be kind of nice to to get a little more parity across the board. Like 
we, we've got polished deep slate and deep slate bricks. It would be kind of nice to have like polished diorite and diorite bricks and same for andesite and granite. And for that matter, if you're going to have the bricks, you might as well have the cracked brick variety as well. Now that's something I would like to see. I'd and, like to see some cracked, uh, not not well, just quartz, but the yeah. uh, the smooth quartz. I think um, that would look really cool. Oh, so what, what would you have to do then? Bake it twice? Bake it once to smooth it and bake it a second time to crack it? Yeah, because you okay. overcooked it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've overcooked many things. I don't know the quartz has been among them. <laughs> Uh, but it, mostly I was thinking about that because I, I was uh, lining up our, our wither killer section with some end stone bricks instead of the raw end stone. And I'm sitting there looking at it like, you know what would make this give it a little more variety and make it look good? Some cracked end stone bricks. And for that matter, some cracked purple blocks would be kind of nice too. Um, and then I also wondered like, I mean, you can't do mossy end stone bricks. That just doesn't seem to fit right. But what if you mix some coarse fruit with the end stone to make end stone bricks that had like the purple vines going through it? Hmm. Or, or is that getting a little too fanciful? <laughs> no, doable. Definitely doable. And is there a mossy, is there a mossy brick? I can't remember. No, 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 there isn't. No, that would be nice. Dampen some of that red down a little. Yeah, yeah. Like, like so, you know, j just kind of like take, take, take a little time to do a block parity update. You know, get some slabs and stairs and walls for the stuff that doesn't have it. Get some, uh, get some cracked brick. Because with uh, with 1.19, they added the mud blocks now. Um, you can dig them up in, in the swamps. You can throw a splash bottle of water on a dirt block, and that'll turn it into a mud block. Hmm. You can put a mud block over a dripstone, and it will dry it out into dirt. Uh, you can also bake the mud block to get, uh, oh, sorry, I can't remember if you got to do the, you got to mix the mud with uh, wheat to get mud bricks. I know there's something to do with uh, the mud and wheat and getting a new block that'll also give you bricks, stairs, slabs, walls. flies <laughs> your fault you let him in my fault yep I blame Java yeah he hasn't caught him yet yeah I know lazy puppy <laughs> I just think it's funny that he tries well I, I mean <laughs> Are we surprised? Are we really surprised? A little bit, yeah. Definitely, yeah. Oh, that's that's not the okay. There we go. That's the block I was looking for. <laughs> Trying to hide the hide the redstone because <laughs> I, I I I took the the basalt generator out of there and I want to put it here where where it's got. So it looks like it's a part of a a, a pile of, a a working pile. Now I need to go grab, um, oh, I need it, uh, 
put the... Is that, oh, is that all I got left of basalt? That is all I got left of basalt. Okay. Well, it looks like you're uh, AFK at the basalt farm later. Nah, nah. Not, not until I get a project. Basalt isn't one of those things that I find that I need mass quantities of until I do. Now, now bringing some of the blackstone back from from the nether, that's uh, that's another matter entirely. Well, that's what we got the pig farm for now. Well, no, that's, that's what I'm saying is we got a bunch of blackstone over there. I might grab a couple of stacks to, to stick in storage here. And maybe even craft craft up a couple of stacks of the bricks and polished and just to have those handy for the next project like this where I'd like to, you know, be all ready ready. Hmm. Okay, good. Just wanted to check and make sure that was working. Be a shame to do all that work and find out that it didn't work. <laughs> All right, somewhere in here, I think I've got, yes. How many masons do I want? Eight? Yes, but if I do that, that one's got to go. Otherwise, they're gonna try to path over here and they're not gonna be able to do anything and people are gonna be mad. I'm gonna be mad. So I can put that guy there and that guy there. No, 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 because again, they 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 don't realize that they can they can go up a block to villagers. I'm gonna go to the doctor and they're gonna tell me you need to bring your blood pressure down. Stop working with villagers. Mm. <laughs> Oh, that reminds me. I need to make sure they can't climb up on this stuff because they will. They will do that. How do I? How do I villager-proof this? Uh, this pile of stone. Yep. Well, either way, that's got to happen before before I get the villagers up here. Did I put all nine down? I didn't mean to put nine down. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Did I count that right? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, that's uh, that's too many. Still got to idiot-proof the stairs. Sorry, villager-proof the stairs. I'll leave that there for the moment. And I don't know if I'm going to, I don't know if I'm going to put something else in this room or just fill it back in. I'll have to think about that. Or since that's pretty close to the outer edge and one of the things I want to do is get a barn. I could make it so that way the barn is accessible from here and the outside. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like it. Of course, I can't help but notice that not a bit of this is uh, <laughs> on that to-do list. <laughs> Let's see. What, what's on the to-do list side so I know what to prepare for? <laughs> oh, that, that was going to be my original plan was where the Blaze Farm. I, I had intended to grab a bunch of the blackstone and do and prep for the blaze farm, but I got distracted by the villagers. And and getting this whole area set up out here. Which again, I I, I think that turned out okay. I do like having the villagers running around. I just hate that they're they're such a pain to work with. Why are you at 18 hit points? Why are you at 19 hit points? What, what? Oh, oh, wait. You guys are all standing close together. Let me see if I can, uh, can I burp a splash potion fast enough? <laughs> Need to 
start keeping some gunpowder downstairs so I can do this. <laughs> so I can finish off some splash potions down there. Brew, brew, before they all disperse for the day. <laughs> but yeah, I, I want to start getting uh, more blaze powder handy. Makes sense. Uh, nope, you guys are full health. Now you're full health. There we go. Hey, 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 no, 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 don't run away. Alright, there we go. Now you're all back to full health. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's right, because it's, uh, it's quarter after eight. You guys are now trying to work, so you're all going to run to your stations. I kind of like that, you know, we got we got them spaced out, so, you know, a couple of guys are always up front in the little alcoves up front. I, I, need, more, I need more silly names for the books that are going to be sitting on the ground like that, though. Uh, the, only, the only one that immediately comes to mind is A Tale of Two Villages. And I just need kind of Minecraft puns on existing names. Rayest. Help me, Rayest. You're my only hope. She's not paying attention, is she? Probably. She probably has her head set in. This stuff. I've got 256 levels. I might run out. <laughs> well, if you happen to do so, mm -hmm. there's a gold farm. Yeah, I, I know. I know. It, I think you'll be okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, let me go to this one where I've got these two books. And I think I'll do one, a fistful of emeralds, and another, a uh, few emeralds more. <laughs> did you do a tale of two villages? Yeah, I did a tale of two villages. Why are you doing this to me? Why are you in my way? If you aren't my sharpness and piercing guy, we might have other words. Oh. <laughs> uh, one, of, one of the books that I had on the lectern is Procrastination. I just got one, one more. Uh, no, two more. Two more punny book names. <laughs> 
feel like there ought to be an Alice in Wonderland reference, but I'm not sure what to what to put. Let's uh, either that or a Monty Python reference. <laughs> Something in the search for the Holy Emerald. Hi, hmm. Jeff. I know. I'll be ending soon, and you can be fed. Untitled Chicken Book. That's a riff on Untitled Goose Game. Oh, goodness. What? You gonna... Oh, goodness me. Hi, guys. Yeah, this dude's got mending and silk touch. And I'm gonna have to start saving up my emeralds because I need to I need to name all these guys. I started thinking about maybe I should go like with the, the whole mash thing and start naming them Abel, Baker, Charlie, Dave. What do I do for the E? Earl? <laughs> oh! I heard you. I heard you take damage. Did you seriously find a way to hurt yourself falling off of here? Like, what do I gotta do? What do I gotta do? How? How do I keep you guys from hurting yourselves? Why are you like this? Now I know why people do the, the little one by one by two villager holding cells. It's the only way to protect you from yourself. Although, alright, buying all those name tags is going to take a lot of emeralds, so I'm probably going to just AFK over by the pumpkin melon. Ooh, wow. That's, uh, <laughs> that, that's just since I grabbed the last bunch. And, and that's still smaller than the one that uh, Medic put together season season one ish. Although I still want to do an industrial sized melon pumpkin farm somewhere. That, that that's supposed to just be my boutique home stock. Or I just need to supplement a little bit. Uh, I need to get a moss farm together because. I want mossy cobble and mossy stone bricks, and I ain't doing that with vines. Moss is easier. Oh, <laughs> okay. I knew I was forgetting something. Um, I was going to work on a on, on an underground path to the, uh, the central room. So, you know, in the center of the caldera, we got that room. It's down at Y level 100. So I figured, all right, I'll just start the stairs and just keep going this way. And down and down we go. And I'm sitting here going, all right, where where is this going to pop out? Um, oh, <laughs> that, that's, that stair is too far, uh, <laughs> too far forward to make it into the room. Because if I keep going at that angle, it's going to put me dropping in the room over like here. So I got to figure out what I want to do about that. I, I'm actually thinking what I might do is figure out where another floor is going to go. Come down to another floor and then go down and zigzag my way down to that room over there. That that is my that is my current thought. So that that got stalled because I think I might need to figure out if I want to move this floor down a little bit. 
but I definitely want to move these farms to more permanent locations. This was just supposed to be a testing area. Like, I'd like to find a better place for that. I'd like to find a better place for this. Uh, I almost, I almost want to take uh, a couple of these guys and put them in the wall here and on the other side. Or figure out a way to do like this and have the farms up here, but more accessible and decorated. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll move them up here in a way that's a little better decorated and accessible. At some point. I'm just happy. This is like the third time I've moved the basalt farm. And I'd like to get a basalt generator going into a TNT chamber that's coupled with the Concrete Maker of Awesomeness. That is still on my agenda. I just haven't found one that, that looks about like what I want to do. Um, Blaze Farm, I know what I want to do. I just got to gather the parts and make that happen. Uh, maybe not Friday, but probably next Tuesday I'll work on that Blaze Farm. And Arcadius, I'm going to need you to keep the blaze off me while I build their sudden but inevitable doom. <laughs> Will well, do. Maybe not so sudden, but their inevitable doom. <laughs> gotcha. That's easily enough. Yeah. All right. I guess we'll leave it there. And this is where I'll say thank you for joining along. I hope you had fun. Every Tuesday, 6.30 or at least 6.30 adjacent is Coffee Craft Fridays at 6.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern is a little bit of a grab bag right now. Uh, if I can actually clear up the bench next to me by next Saturday, or by next Saturday, by Friday, I'll, uh, I might be doing some guitar work there. Just uh, just depends on where, where things are at. Um, so just uh, keep an eye on Twitter, and uh, and, <laughs> and you'll know when I know. All right. <laughs> let, let, let's go, uh... Oh. No. Really? There's nobody... There's nobody... Nobody on to raid. Or nobody that I want to raid. Uh, that's probably the more appropriate. All right, then I guess we'll, uh... We'll just end it here. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.